reality came to me in the most surreal way. I hadn't been extraordinarily close with the neighbors in my neighborhood, but there is a guy who lives halfway down the street. Reminds me kind of of Santa Claus's cousin, right? And he came to me early morning driving by, showed me a photo of his daughter's cat. His daughter's visiting him, let the cat out in the backyard. Cat's been cool, staying close like a frady cat. Cute little fluff ball, round, smushed in face, you know, really looks like a cotton puff ball, right? Gone, missing, can't find them. This is the second morning, it's like, uh oh. So we, we talked for a few. Then later that day, while preparing brunch for company, there's a knock on the door, and it's this Asian lady who's the daughter of Santa Claus's cousin. She shows me another picture of the cat, asked if I had seen him. I said no. Gave her a little bit of comfort, gave her a little bit of assuredness. She began to weep. I decided I would imagine well for her and that everything would be okay. So, told her that it would be okay gave her a little bit of comfort, moved about my day. Now, both of these visits seem a little bit surreal, just a little bit. I had company, so I played host, I entertained. Again, for me, to actually practice, I wanted to devote a little bit of, of, of concentration. I don't want to be practicing incorrectly. Like, it's really just a case of putting to practice that which I've learned. When the afternoon started winding down and company had left, I did give a few moments of my first true, real, official certified Neville Goddard approved manifestation, imaginal act. And I consolidated down to a singular moment, refined down in a little embodiment of emotion, and that one clink, or that one, in this case, hug, a squeeze of her snuggling that cat. Now that I kind of knew a little bit of what she looked like, and I kind of knew what the cat looked like, so I envisioned them snuggling again, and I envisioned her giving a squeeze and I saw a smile and a joy radiate from her in my imaginal act that I had not seen in real life until, right? So get a load of this. So not an hour or so passes from, from that moment. My little buddy, Richard Parker, he comes over to me and he gives me a little tail twitch. But this one was like exceptional. This one actually had a little whirl like get the fuck up and follow me, right? And it's like, all right. So w that was notably interesting. Um, so I got up and followed him to the window. And sure enough, he's showing me. I look down in the driveway and there's this little gray puffball kitty cat looking up at me with his little pushed in face just sitting there. Like a good boy, just sitting there in the driveway looking up. I'm fucking psyched. So I get up. Of course, I go down there. The cat's gone, right? So now it's like, use the false, Luke. So I go out with the bag of treats. I don't know. Trying to find the cat and, like, literally shut off my targeting computer. Like, literally use the false. And there was a moment of, of testing of, of faith where... I like forgot about it. I made the act, I caught it, it was all there. I just had to imagine, you know, um, consolidate to like a point, right? And that point was the squeeze and the glow of joy. Long story short, the cat was there. The cat was there. I found the cat on the side of the house, outside behind shrubs, nice and secure, looking up at me. <laughs> big eyes. Strange. I had a dream maybe a night before. The only thing I noted were somewhat large eyes of the characters. 
I texted the woman. I sent her a photo of the cat hiding behind the bush. She came, joyed. Her dad had come, joyed. Part of my imaginal act included a bonding between the father and daughter as well, because I can imagine the strife that may have created. She's visiting from New York, brings her cat with her. Dad lets the cat out, cat runs away. Strange neighborhood. Literally a couple days prior, my neighbors tell me about this big coyote just prancing down the middle of the street like he owns the joint. I've seen it before. And she turned around, I turned around, and she walks over to me holding the cat like this little stuffed animal and she just gave it a squeeze and she lit up in a way that I had seen once before, forgot about, because I didn't see it like that. I had seen it in my human imagination, but like literally I had seen it only in my mind had literally forgotten about it so the experience of seeing it for the first time but it wasn't and then like by seeing it remembering that what i was seeing i had seen before only because i acted to do so i created the scene and then i literally watched the scene play out in front of me in real and it was on behalf of this other woman I fed the baby pig do you, do you know what I'm saying one of my best videos right there you gotta click that shit feed baby Jesus man but the point is it worked like so <laughs> worked I don't even know like what 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 words I should even say because she winds up texting me again later and it's ping-ponging and you know and i'm i'm being you know it's, it was at a pretty good place anyway um but it really seemed like when it rains it freaking pours like it, it literally seemed like fantastical like even like she was a you know, beautiful asian dude her text to me i don't even know what's not even a thing but it's like you know along with and it led to and like I was the, I saw the opportunity, um, one that I did not pursue, um, but it was an opportunity I wasn't even striving for. I mean, so in terms of like, you know, manifestation, my first and like thing, to, like not that out of the park, like beyond what I was even going for. It's interesting. Neville speaks of condensing and restricting. Right? Like a riverbed. Right? Condensing and restricting down to a single act. And reenact that singular condensed act. That clink. Or the... Mm. But that, that little consolidation and crystallization of emotion in a moment. And then keep reenacting that return to the task, return to the one act, the one, the, the staircase, the railing, the, the one thing, right? The one thing that you've crystallized to embody that moment and keep reenacting that. It was very, very surreal. I'll say that. It's like, are these NPCs, are these people f***ing real? Like, seriously. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Right? Hmm. Very dreamlike. I realize this. It would appear that there's people out there testing all the time, and they're not manifesting, haven't been consciously creating their world with that power and might appropriating it and claiming it into being. Test it on others then. You can't go wrong there. Follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would like done unto you, right? So you can't go wrong because you're really doing blessings for others. You're fattening the pig. You're trying to get heaven 
made on earth and it's not even try do or do not there is no try right so it's literally creating heaven on earth on the behalf of others using your imagination on the behalf of others using your imagination lovingly to make the world a better place